Hi, my name is Celeste, and this is my podcast, Yarn to Table. I want to say a big warm welcome if this is your first time watching me. I hope that you will find something here that you like, and if you do, you can hit the subscribe button and join me for more discussions of yarny goodness every single Monday. And if you are a returning viewer and you are already a subscriber, I want to say thank you so much for coming back and for being a part of our little knitty community here in this corner of the knit turnet. <laughs> I tried to make that one work. Um, so I've got quite a show for you today. We're going to talk about finished objects, works in progress. We're going to have a big old stash enhancement, and we're also going to debut a brand new section that is a designer spotlight. So I'm going to talk about one of my favorite designers and share with you some of my favorite designs by her. Um, and my cat Augie is right here and looking like he might want to join in this discussion at any moment. So apologies if he does his usual thing of um, rubbing his chin up against the camera itself or knocking the camera down or putting his cat butt right in the lens of the camera, just any of those other charming little things that he loves to do. Right? You gonna be bad? He's gonna be bad today, I can tell. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, he's just, he's in need of some attention right now because his daddy is working this weekend, so he's he's down to just one human and he's used to being pampered by two. Okay, so jumping in, um, you may have noticed that we have a finished object to talk about today. I'm gonna take it off to show you and also because I'm burning up in here. Whoo! You guys. I did it. I finished this damn thing. Look how big this is. They said this was a quick knit. This was not a, a this is not a quick knit. This is not what I would call a quick knit. Um, okay, so this is the Ashburn shawl, and if you have just started watching in the last few weeks, you probably don't even recognize it because I honestly have not touched this in about a month. Um, and it was starting to um, bother me that it was still on the needles and just sitting on the needles and making me not want to cast on new things and feel guilty. So I decided to really, gosh, I'm sorry. I realize why my nose always itches when I record this video and it's because my cat gets in my face and then I have this fur in my face. Um, <laughs> so what was I saying? Oh my gosh. So I wanted to get it off the needles. When I last touched it, I had completed the gray section, which is the longest section, and then the middle section of the speckling, and I was right at the end of the speckling. So this week I picked up and started with the third section, which is the pink, and I did all of that. Um, in the last couple days, actually, I think it was three sessions of knitting, um, which when you look at how wide that stripe is, it doesn't seem that big, but when you consider how long it is, and also just this bind off alone took like a couple hours, well, like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. It started to speed up as I went along because I kind of got in the rhythm of it. But anyway, um, this was a bit of a slog for me. I hate to like start off on a negative, but I do like the way it turned out. Obviously, I love the yarn. This is, these are my colors. I mean, you know, you know I love this yarn. Um, this is Madeline Tosh 801010 in Boxcar minimal pink clay optic and scout and it is very yummy it's very stretchy it's very soft it's exactly what you want to have next to your skin um and i think they look gorgeous together even though you know the pink and the pink clay optic is not exactly the same as the pink and the scout i still think that they all like all the colors flatter each other well and um and i do like it a lot why I say it wasn't my favorite thing to knit is that, um, first of all, these little stripes 
that run through it, which are of the of the middle color. They run into the gray, and then they run into the pink here. And you can tell I didn't do the greatest job matching yarn to pattern here because I wasn't really thinking about these stripes. I don't even think I really noticed them when I picked out the colors. I just picked three colors that looked good together. And obviously, it could do a better job of showing up if there were more of a contrast there. So, not the greatest choice. It's not a huge deal, but for this tiny little effect that could look better with a better yarn, I had to do um, a lot of carrying and wrapping on the edge because it stripes. I don't love that. And to get this sort of like woven look, I had to do some rows that were um, knit one and then slip one with yarn in front which is just not super fun because it's like pushing the yarn to the front and then the back and the front and the back a lot. Um, so, you know, I mean, like, it's just not the most fun thing to do for an effect that, because of my yarn choice, isn't that great. And then the middle section had these repeats that created this nice little texture that involved a lot of slip stitches. And it had, again, some of that not the most fun stuff where you're knitting and then slipping with the yarn in front. Plus, in all of this time, I, by the time I got to the end, I was like almost had it memorized. It wasn't easy to remember and I was having to consult the pattern, which is not the most fun thing also. Um, so, you know, it's just, I was just ready for it to be done and I'm very, very glad that it's done now. Um, I started this on my anniversary trip, so that would have been at the end of January. And it is now April 2nd, and I just finished it today. I actually haven't blocked it yet. Um, so, you know, I and that's with having it <laughs> sitting aside, not being touched for about four weeks. Um, so maybe it is kind of a fast knit. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, but... I think it's cute, but I think that I'm going to spend more time in the future thinking about the experience of knitting a pattern and not just how it looks. And, um, you know, I'll do something that isn't my very favorite thing if it looks good, but I just, I just want to put more thought into that because I think when I chose this, I really just picked it because it was very popular and a lot of people were raving about how much fun it was. And just because other people like something doesn't mean you're going to like it. So I just have to keep that in mind. But, um, you know, but it wasn't like a huge slog to get through. I mean, it didn't really take that long in the end. And I do like the way that it looks. It is a little bit difficult to wear because it's asymmetrical. Um, it has a nice point, but the point is off center. And so when you put the point in the center and you wrap it around, you have like one really long tail hanging down. And then if you wrap that a second time, it just becomes kind of too bulky. So I am, you know, like I said, I just finished it like less than an hour ago. So I haven't really had a chance to experiment with what's my favorite way to wear it. So maybe I will do some looking on Ravelry and seeing how other people are wearing it and um, try to figure that out a little bit better. But I definitely love the fabric that it created a lot. Very good yarn. Very stretchy, soft yarn. Now, I realized that I was so excited to jump into finished objects because I wanted to show you that and get it off my neck because it is warm in here. And I skipped right over my administrative stuff. I have cows to tell you about. I have a Ravelry group to promote. What am I doing? Um, there are three cows going on right now. You can find all of them in the Yarn to Table Ravelry group. There's a link in the doobly-doo. And you can also find it just by searching Yarn to Table in the groups tab on Ravelry. Um, you can also find my personal page on Ravelry. I am at Celeste Full. I'm also on Instagram. So you can follow along there, find details for any of the products, uh, projects that you see me discussing on the podcast. Um, but the group on Ravelry is where you will find uh, giveaways and cows, all of those good chatter threads and finished object threads. So definitely join so you can keep up with that. Um, we have two cows going on right now and I have one to announce. So... 
Um, current cows, there's the New Socks Cow, which is all about new sock techniques. I have a bunch of examples of new techniques in the chatter thread. It can be as simple as a new kind of heel or even a new kind of yarn, or it can be very complex. It can be your first time knitting two at a time, your first time knitting toe up, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so check that out. We have an incredible uh, prize for that. It is a hand-dyed skein by Andy of the 10,000 Stitches podcast. And in fact, you get to choose um, one of two skeins that she sent. The other one is going to be for me, and I'm going to let you choose your favorite. So if you want to see what those look like, check out the last episode. Um, I also will try to post a photo of them on the chatter group thread so that that'll be easier for you guys to um, access. So there have already been some posts in the FO thread on that and that's very exciting but the Cal is running through the end of April so you still have plenty of time to knit a pair of socks. The second Cal that is currently in process although we've not had our cast off cast on date yet is the Great Unravel 2017. So I say it's in process because we are looking for our sweaters to unravel to reuse the yarn. This is our Earth Day cal and we will be casting on on Earth Day which is April 22nd. So there's still some time before the official cast on but everybody is currently out there tracking down their sweaters. You can see what other people are finding on Instagram under the hashtag the great unravel 2017 and there's lots of fun stuff going on with that. This is going to be a big cal I think because it's been co-hosted by three of us. Me, Caitlin of Wool Jewel, and Taylor of Wool Needles Hands. So definitely check out their their channels for additional information on this cal. You can find some tutorials on unzipping sweaters and things like that. And later this week, possibly tomorrow, you will be able to check out a vlog that I recorded on my process of finding a sweater and um, and unraveling it. And uh, and I also have some of that to to share with you today in stash enhancement. Let you see. The sweater and what the yarn is looking like as I'm unraveling it. So definitely check out that vlog. I also squeezed a little bit of a um, an avocado toast recipe in there just because I needed to eat <laughs> while I was <laughs> recording the vlog and I was like, hey, this could be some good content too. Let me just show them my toast. Um, so if you're looking for some fun creative toppings for your avocado toast, I would also recommend the vlog for that. So check it out because who doesn't love avocado toast? Crazy people, that's who. Seriously disturbed individuals. Okay, so I promised you three cows. Announcement time, everybody. Third cow. This will be kicking off a month from now, May 1st. So plenty of time to start planning and looking for yarn, which is good because it's a garment cow. And this I will be co-hosting with Anna of the Dunkelgrün podcast. That's my best German pronunciation. Um, so it's going to run from May 1st all the way through August 31st, which is four whole months. We want to give you guys plenty of time because this is a summer garment cow. And I really, really want to encourage people who maybe don't think of themselves as garment knitters, maybe you've never knitted a garment before, or you've never knit an adult size garment before, or even if you are a big garment knitter, we want you to. Um, but I wanted to make it four months long so that even if you're not super confident about garments, you feel confident knowing that you have enough time. And it also gives plenty of time for people who want to knit multiple garments because you will be able to enter a new entry for every garment that you complete in the time frame. As long as you cast on and cast off between May 1st and August 31st, that will be eligible. So what do I mean when I say summer garment? I feel like there is so much focus on sweaters in the knitting world and sweaters are incredible. I mean, I understand why there's so much focus on them. They're great. But a lot of people don't knit a lot of garments in the summertime because they 
aren't in the mood to wear sweaters and they don't want something warm and wooly on their lap when it's hot outside, and I totally get that. But the fact of the matter is that we're missing out on this whole opportunity of other clothing that you can make knitted that you can wear in the summertime. So to qualify as a summer garment, what you make needs to either be made from a lightweight yarn, silk, linen, and bamboo are good examples that come to mind, and or it needs to be at least short sleeves. So in other words, you can do like a linen tank top, absolutely, that's obviously a summer garment. But since it's linen, you can also do like a lightweight, longer sleeved linen cardigan that's like a summertime cardigan, that's fine. However, if you're gonna use wool or something like that, it definitely needs to be like a short sleeve sweater. No wool, long sleeve cardigans, that's obviously not a summer garment. So it's sort of a, you know it when you see it, Trust your gut, you can ask me if you have any questions, but you know, does it make sense as a summer garment? Is it justifiably a summer garment? That's the focus and the intention of the knit along. And if you don't normally knit things like that, this is a great opportunity to sort of get outside your comfort zone and check that out. So that also brings me to another very exciting part of this knit along, which is that I have created a bundle of pattern ideas and recommendations, all of which would be great for this uh, knit along. It's a summer garment bundle, and it is currently available in the Yarn to Table Ravelry group. So, uh, if you click the link in the doobly-doo to the Ravelry group, up on the top there will be tabs, and it'll say bundle one for one bundle. That is the only bundle that we have right now in the group. Um, unless you're watching this in the distant future and we somehow have more bundles, it should say one. But anyway, you click that, you click Summer Garment Cal, or Summer Garments, I think it's called, and I have about 150 different patterns that I've listed in there for you guys. Um, all kinds of great stuff from tanks and camis to t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, cardigans, all kinds of cool ideas. Now, if you wanna do bottoms, I would say that's also totally acceptable, but you wanna keep it summery. So like a light pair of, of knitted shorts would be good, a knitted skirt, but not like a knee length wool knitted skirt. Like, you know, again, the same sort of rules apply. Um, I imagine most people will probably be doing tops just cause that's more conventional, but by all means, if you wanna do a bottom and you see a bottom, that's a garment that works. So, um, I think that's everything that's important to tell you about that. Yeah, I don't have a prize um, determined yet. Hopefully there will be several prizes because it's a longer, more in-depth cal. Um, and for this knit along and just for knit alongs and giveaways and stuff in general in the future, um, don't hesitate to let me know if you would be interested in providing a prize for that. I've had various people reach out to offer prizes that are currently up in the uh, knit alongs that we have right now, Andy's Yarn, and I think I forgot to mention it, but the um, one of the Great Unravel prizes is a pattern by Yarn and Time Designs, um, and both of those came from um, viewers and creators like you who offered to donate a prize, so if you're interested, uh, just let me know. You can hit me up on Ravelry or in the comments down here, whatever, and I would be very, very grateful because we got lots more cows coming up and I want to be able to offer people cool prizes. And I can't just continue to buy back my own books from Half Price Books every single time that I need to give away a prize, you guys. I mean, it's only so many times you can humiliate yourself in that particular fashion. Okay, FOs I already showed you, so let's move on to whips. <sighs> all right, I have three whips. They're all socks. Um, I would love to tell you that I've made progress on my foam cardigan, but unfortunately I have not touched it this week because I've been so focused on getting the ash burn off the needles. Um, but I do think that when I'm done with this, I'm going to immediately go downstairs and work on my phloem because I've been missing it. Um, so I'm not going to show you this week because there's nothing to show, but hopefully there will be some progress to show you next week. In the meantime, here are the socks that I'm currently working on. 
So these are a new cast on. They are living in my Patchwork Gilmore Girls bag that I made for myself. And these are my Easter egg socks. Just barely started them. Um, the heels, tufts, ugh, heels, cuffs, oh my goodness, heels, cuffs, and toes, okay, are in mint. This is Knit Picks Stroll in mint. And then the rest is in the self-striping Felici from Knit Picks in the colorway Soft Serve. Um, just lots of lovely little pastels. I did mention that I was going to do a sort of like slip every fourth stitch thing to try to create a nice little texture. And I swear I've heard and seen people doing that before. And yet now when I look for it online, I can't find anything. So maybe I dreamt it. I don't know. But what I had in mind is not working very well, so I kind of gave up on it. That's why I was trying to find it online to see if there was something I was missing. You can tell in this first row where the, the sort of yellow turns into pink, these are the places where I've slipped the stitch, right? And it's visible, but it's not creating that look that I wanted. So I just let it be. I figured it wasn't too noticeable if I just let that one be and then just stopped. So now I'm just knitting them as, as striped socks. Um, whatever. They're nice and pastel-y and they make me think of Easter. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are fun. I always love a good, a good self-striping sock. And speaking of self-striping socks, I also made some progress this week on Ryan's, which are currently living in my Harry Potter bag now that my Pygmy Puff socks have vacated it. I figured Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, not too far away. His are the Beyond the Wall socks. So this is also Felici in the color would be on the wall, inspired by Game of Thrones, and heels, heels and toes, although not cuffs, out of Stroll in Black. I went ahead and did a striped cuff on this one. And the last time you saw it, I don't know where I was, probably about here, but I was close enough to the heel that I just went ahead and powered through the Fish Lips Kiss heel shortly after we spoke last week because I, um, I wanted to, gosh, what am I trying to say? I wanted to get it back to being a simple um, vanilla on the go. So like I, you know, I, the fish lips kiss takes like slightly more concentration. So, so when, when you have a free moment and you're almost to it, you're kind of like, well, let me just get through that heel and then I can go ahead and, and let it kind of sit around to be, be picked up in those moments when you need it. So this is definitely a longer cuff than I've done before. Um, I'm curious to see how my husband feels about that. It's this long simply because I decided that I wanted to split the black stripe, which I haven't done before, um, with the heel. And so I knit till I got to it, basically. Um, and it doesn't look that great. You can clearly tell that the stroll is darker than the stripe in the self-striping which I kind of could tell when I was making the decision to do it, but I just went ahead and did it, so I don't know. It's kind of disappointing, but I wanted I wanted to see, I've never split the stripe before, and I don't want to split the stripe when it's not the same color as the heel, because I don't like the way that looks with like a shorter stripe on both sides. So this was just sort of an opportunity to, to try out splitting the stripe and I think I was, I was more excited about trying it than I was about making sure it was perfect. So I just did it even though it's clearly noticeably not perfect and um, now I've just got to live with that choice I guess. <laughs> not a big deal but you know, not the best, not the best. I try not to be too obsessive about my knitting, but, you know, I can only be myself. Okay, and the third sock in my Madewell pouch 
You've already seen the hoe. Very, very beautiful, if I do say so myself. And I went ahead and started the second one. So, boy, does this ruffle take a while, I'm telling you. You cast on like almost 200 stitches to do it, and then you decrease down. Um, so I did this ruffle while uh, recording Return to Stars Hollow this week, and um, I just needed a, a night when I was like, gonna be sitting down and working on it and not on the move because with 200 stitches on a shorter needle like this, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, once you get through that, you know, you can kind of whiz down the rest of the sock for the most part. Um, but I haven't really picked it up since then. That was um, like Monday or something like that and it's Sunday. So was it though? Oh, who cares? Um, yeah. So happy to be started on that one and to get these done so that I can wear them because they are so great. Um, did I say, these are the Renesme socks by Rachel Coopy from the ebook When Vampires Knit Socks and they're on Knit Picks um, Stroll Tonal in Pearlescent, which, why is it? Why is it that the Stroll Tonal comes in a um, in a skein, so you have to cake it up, but the the Stroll Solids come in like those center pulse balls? Like, what is? Why is that? It's still Stroll. It's so strange. It makes it look fancier. So those are all my whips. So now I want to show you my stash enhancement, and then we will get into discussion of the um, designer spotlight and some chit chat. A very exciting stash enhancement for you today. Start with needles. I went ahead and ordered another 2.25, 32 inch um, Chagu red lace for my socks because I have, um, I only have two sock needles that are the size to do for myself. My husband's socks are on a 2.5. Um, and the other one is high, high, sharp, and as I've discussed in the past, I'm just completely over stabbing myself. So I went ahead and ordered another one of these on Amazon. So I will be transferring the Easter egg shop socks from the high, high, sharps to this um, the next time I knit on them. And then I have some Nora George yarn to show you, as well as my unraveling. So we'll start with the Nora George. Quite a lot, you guys. She had like a pre-order thing a little while ago, like about a month ago at least. Um, and I was pretty excited, so I maybe went just a little bit overboard. So try not to judge me too hard. Um, I'm pretty excited about it though. Okay, so here's what I have to show you. First, I got two sock sets, and then I got a bunch of Harry Potter themed sock yarn. So first the sock sets. This one is called Spring, and this is on 75.25. Lovely, subtle, sort of peachy pink with those pops of green and blue, and then the spring green, mint green mini for the heels, cuffs, and toes. Love it. And then the other sock set, oh, I've wanted this for a while for quite a while. This is Toffee Apple, which you may recognize from some Mercury socks that Katie of Inside Number 23 knit a little while ago. And I'm trying not to just completely rip her off. <laughs> I keep thinking, couldn't I do a different pattern with them? But I just thought it looked so beautiful. Hi, hi sweetie. I just thought it looked so beautiful as Mercury socks that I'm pretty sure I just wanted want to just do that so at least I'm admitting that I'm ripping her off right honey do you want to get up here so of course the yarn has this lovely sort of just toffee orangey peachiness with the pops of the sour apple and then the heels cuffs and toes and the sour apple apple mini would be perfect for fall do you want to get in my lap come here hey 
What's the matter? Why are you so upset today? You gonna get pet? Okay, I'm gonna get some pets. We'll get you some pets. Okay, so now there's some Harry Potter themed sock yarn to show you, which I'm gonna try to reach for elegantly as I balance this cat on my lap. You know, I'm always watching podcasts where like a kid comes into the room and wants to get on the parent's lap and their parent is like picking them up and stuff and for me it's my cat. <laughs> okay, so let's try to look at the yarn while we have the cat. This is gonna work great. Okay, Harry Potter grab bag. I don't even know what I'm grabbing for. Oh yes, this one is Fred and George. And what I love most about it, although of course I love the pops of neon because those make me think of like Zonko's joke shop. But I really love this twist of the mustard and the cream as the base. I just think that's really special. That was definitely what sold me on this one. And then we have anything from the trolley deers, which is just full of color. It's actually much more colorful than anything I would normally go for. Um, I don't know if it was the name that got me or I just, I love those little speckles there. This one just, I don't know, it just spoke to me. And then we have two more. This one is Dudley Demented. which you can see kind of has a bit of that pink and grayish thing that I go for. Some nice speckles on the back there. Um, and Dudley Demented, if you don't know, is a chapter early in the sixth, no, fifth book, um, where Dementors show up. Yeah, the fifth book. Um, Dementors show up on Privet Drive, and there he goes, um, and almost hurt Dudley, and or almost kill Dudley, and uh, Harry conjures a Patronus, and then he kind of gets in trouble with the Ministry for conjuring the Patronus. Now I'm just on a tangent, but I just think that's a reference that maybe is a little bit um, more obscure. And there goes the bag, finally. We have Bill and Fleur's wedding, of course, from the, or Bill and Fleur get married, it's called, from the seventh book, which is just lovely, little pink and blue, almost kind of like cotton candy. Augie. Augie, honestly, you can't do that. Um, it's actually fairly similar to the speckled pixie that I have from um, Fiber Evolution. So maybe it was bad of me to get something that's similar to something I already have. But, you know, it's Nora George and it's Harry Potter and Augie, you can't just, you, honestly, Augie, we're going to have to figure this out, you and me, buddy. Okay, you want to get in my lap? Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. There you go. Okay, great. So, now let's talk about Designer Spotlight. So this week I wanna talk about Nora Gotham, uh, Goth, Gothen. <sighs> I'm putting her name up on the screen. I'm doing my best to pronounce it, um, but I'm not sure how it's pronounced. So, I just really fell in love with her this week, actually. I had already some of her patterns in my favorites, but I was going through all of them and just um, all of her patterns and just finding so many more things that I loved. Sweaters. Um, sweaters that I wanted to make. Like, I have a bundle in my favorites called Mine, 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 which is where I put patterns for sweaters that like I want to wear the second. Um, and I kind of draw from that when I decide what is the next sweater I want to make for myself and I instantly had to put like six of hers in there it was crazy so I'm going to show you pictures of them and just tell you a bit about them and and what I like about them 
Um, so the first one is called Wolf Knight, and this is done in a sport weight, and it's a nice pullover with this sort of asymmetric collar that reminds me a little bit of those collars that were popular in the early 2000s, but it's sort of its own thing too. It's got the nice detailed diagonal lines down the front, and it's just that perfect combination of minimal with fun details that I like so much. And then this next one is the one that's pretty much haunting my dreams. I'm so obsessed with it. It is called Chain Link, and it's actually a fingering weight. They recommend Brooklyn Tweed Loft for it, and it's shown in the color Haystack in these photos, and normally I try to knit something in a different color than what's shown in the photos, but sometimes I'm just so in love with it, and the color is like so perfect, and this is definitely one of those cases. Like I can't imagine knitting this in any color other than Haystack. I love the front the way that it has that unusual hem shape. And I think it's probably gonna be like a very interesting construction to knit. And of course the chain link cable detail sort of um, texture to the main part of the sweater reminds me of honeycomb, which you know I'm all about that. Next is Skyscraper. And Skyscraper is a cardigan. Um, oh, there goes Aggie. Skyscraper is a cardigan and it's got this nice sort of big open lapel look in the front. Lovely sort of elegant three-quarter length sleeves. There's something about it. It just makes me think of like a lady's coat in the 1930s or something like that. It's just so incredibly elegant and classy, and yet it also looks comfortable and casual at the same time. And then there's Metropolis. This one's knit in sport weight. And I love, of course, it's asymmetric collar. It definitely looks very vintage. But I think it looks cute buttoned up all the way. You can even tell that it goes over the shoulder at one point with the button. But it also looks really cute in the photos where she's opened it um, and unbuttoned it in the front. So I really like that it's um, adjustable in that way. Adjustable is not the word I'm looking for. Versatile. Um, so I love that. And then finally, I want to show you another cardigan. This is Shoji or possibly Shohi. And Obviously, it's got that like very lovely modern baggy look with the interesting kind of lapels and stuff, but what I love the most about this is that you can wear it right side up or upside down. Um, in other words, <laughs> there's no wrong way to wear it. So in one version, you wear it and you have this long ribbed collar going over your shoulders and a split open back. And another way to wear it is to make the split part your collar and to have this sort of ribbed thing at the bottom creating this interesting sort of side tabs. So I'm a huge fan of things like that that are sort of um, developed to have multiple uses. Um, Another one of my favorite designers whose name I always mispronounce, but it's it's Olga um, something. She designed the Kodo sweater, so you can find her by looking at my um, projects page. Because I can't think of her last name, nor can I ever pronounce it properly. But she has a whole um, set of patterns that are based on this concept of like being able to wear things multiple ways. So like she has a shawl that can also be a vest and stuff, which is cool. But um, but right now we're talking about Nora Goffin. 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 <laughs> um, I can do a whole nother segment on Olga and I will. Um, so I, anyway, I'm just, I'm just so in love with her patterns right now. She actually just released a new collection for Quince & Co. That is all in um, their linen yarns. 
So those would be perfect for the summer garment cowl if you're looking for something fun for that. And um, some of them have the same sort of interesting architectural elements. Um, one of them has that same sort of interesting shaped front that chain link has, but it's a linen uh, camisole. So yeah, she's just brilliant. Um, I became obsessed with her this week and I had to pass it on. And I also really like the idea of making this a regular segment so we can um, just kind of zero in on uh, some of my favorite designers and take a look at a few different things that they've designed that are my favorites. So let me know if you want to hear more um, in that department. And, uh, and also, you know, let me know if you know of any designers who you think that I would like. And um, maybe I haven't heard of them before and I'll check them out and you might see them on here. So yeah, definitely do that. So now let's get into some chit chat. If you're not going to stick around for chit chat, I still want to thank you for joining me for the knitting portion. Um, make sure you hit the thumbs up if you like this to help other people find it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Join the Ravelry group and um, leave me a comment and let me know you're out there and who you are. Uh, if this is your first time watching, I would love to hear from you especially um, or your first time commenting so I can welcome you to the channel. And if you are sticking around, I'm just going to chat a little bit about what's been going on in my life lately. And I'm going to do it while knitting. So hopefully you have some knitting that you can pull out as well if you haven't already. If you haven't been knitting the whole time you're watching this, which is what I love to do when I watch podcasts. Um, and let's talk. Okay, so... This was kind of a crazy week for me. It's actually a little insane to think how much stuff happened in the same week. And it was all sort of front loaded. So I feel kind of distant from it now. But um, so last weekend, um, my husband Ryan's grandmother passed away and she had been in hospice for a little while. She was two days shy of her 99th birthday. Um, and, you know, she is was just this really incredible person. She raised 10 children, even though she didn't get married and start having children until she was almost 30, which was pretty old back then. Um, she couldn't marry her husband until after the war because he was Catholic and she had to convert first. Um... And, like, this is the matriarch of this family that I've married into where when I go to certain family get-togethers and occasions, I look around and I can be in an entire room of people and they're all her descendants. Like, there are these photos that they've taken at Christmas and stuff where it's just her surrounded by 30 people that are all descended from her. And it's just so amazing to think the ways in which she lived such a humble life and also such an extravagant, um, meaningful life where she created so much change in the world by means of creating 10 people and, and raising them well and, and then being active in the lives of their children. I mean, she had great-grandchildren even who she was a big part of their lives. That was part of the experience of the funeral on Monday. So Monday was the funeral. Um, my husband got off work for bereavement and I took a personal day to be there with them. And um, we drove out to the town sort of on the border of um, Ohio and Indiana, which is where his uh, grandmother lived and where his dad grew up. Although he grew up over on the other side in Indiana, my husband did, and now we live here in Cincinnati. But um. So we drove out there and like one of the things was my nephews who are about 10 and 8 had not seen an open casket before and they hadn't, um, the only other person whose funeral they had been to was their grandmother on their father's side who, um, one of them didn't, um, even remember it at all. And so this was, you know, one of their first experiences with death and certainly like probably an impactful memory. And um, 
and that was interesting to like talk to them about it and kind of be there while they were processing it and of course it's just so amazing that this woman like she was their great grandmother and she's been a part of their lives they've seen her regularly their whole lives just as their mother her granddaughter has and and my husband has and she just had this big family and every single person in her family was so devoted to her and she went to she went to mass all every week but when she was young she went to mass every single day she and her husband did um and one of the things that was really interesting to me about the service is that the priest who led it, you know, I've been to a lot of, not a lot, but I've been to a number of funerals. And I've never been to a funeral where the religious leader presiding had such a personal connection, not only to the person who had died, but to their entire family. Like... My husband has not been to Mass there in, you know, 10 years. And yet, during the portion where you greet each other, we were in, like, the second row, and so the the priest came down, and he was shaking our hands, and he was like, nice to see you, Ryan. Like, this this woman has 20 grandchildren, and 10 children and all of their wives and all the grandchildren have wives and then they all have children. And yet this priest, like, you know how sometimes you are at a wedding or a funeral and they're sort of like stumbling over, like checking the name on their um, pa paper. And like, that was so not the experience. Like he was speaking about her and her husband as these people who he really knew and were in his life for decades and he knew their families and he recognized everyone in their family and he knew how to honor her life and talk about her and and how devoted and good she was and like I'm not um, I'm not a religious person myself and I have a lot of um, complicated feelings about the Catholic Church specifically um, because my husband and my father, who are both people that are very dear to me, were both raised Catholic and um, have certain ways in which they are uh, emotionally damaged, I would say would be a fair way of putting it, from some of the um, teachings of that particular church. So I'm not a person who has like warm feelings typically, or just like sees a priest and is like, you know, bowing down in reverence for them. That's not my usual experience. Um, and it was very nice. It was interesting and it was very heartwarming to have this experience of this man being so sincerely connected to my grandmother-in-law and honoring her so well and everyone who was gathered there you know it it it's interesting when someone that old dies because there wasn't the kind of sadness that you have when people are like oh it was too soon or this is shocking and there is mourning, there is sadness, because a lot of her children still saw her multiple times a week, you know, I mean, this is a way in which their daily lives will be changed, they will miss her, she was regularly in their lives and she won't be, and she was their last parent to be alive, and she was tying people together in a way that, you know, their family might not have the same roots anymore like even after the service we all went back to her house to have a meal together that is just the home base of this family and like when that house is sold this family will not have a home base in that way you know so it's like there was a lot to mourn but it 
definitely was one of those situations where you felt like it was mostly about um, just taking the time to like be grateful for a person and honor that person and talk about what made them special. Um, and it, I, it, it was, it was really good to, to be there and to feel like I could be a part of that. Um, Ryan's family is so big and they're all here in town. You know, my family is mostly in Texas and all over the world. Um, you know, I have a cousin who lives in Dubai um, and he used to live in Russia because she worked for the State Department and I have people in, you know, Germany and, you know, because they're in the army and, you know, stationed in Asia and living in DC and Arizona and I've never been really close to my extended family because we've never lived near each other. Um, and even in my immediate family, we don't have the same kinds of habits and rituals that his family have where like there's a lot of regular getting together and eating like a Sunday meal sort of thing, which is something I want to do more of in my, in my family. I want to kind of, now that we have a really big dining room table table and a big enough home that we can invite people over. Like I've been talking to my husband about how I want to have like a regular date on the calendar that's like everybody from both sides is invited to come over for dinner and we spend that time because that's just not as easy in my family and it's baked into his family structure. And there are responsibilities that come with that. Um, I think that he, when we met and we kind of like learned the rhythms of each other's family, like I had to learn that he was regularly going to, you know, be spending a day helping his sister paint her home or, you know, stage her home for photos to sell it and you know babysit because somebody was sick and somebody else needed to be somewhere and like all these kind of ways that his family is just and it's not that my family doesn't do that it's just that it's not as intense his family is like very intensely um, they're just very family oriented, I guess, and I really like that a lot. Um, and it took a while for me to kind of find my own place in it as like marrying in, you know, and, um, but it's really special. And when I think about how much I love all of them and how much I love being in their family and how much I love my husband. I often go back to Emma, his grandmother, and um, and Charles, her husband, and I think about how they created this family together and they instilled them with the values and the goodness that they have. And I just spent a lot of time that day feeling really grateful for that and, and for everything that she had done and how it makes my life good. <laughs> um, so then after the funeral, so we had the, we had a wake and a service and a meal and that was all about six hours and then we went home and we slept for like three hours. We were exhausted and then we woke up and had to go to um, a, a theater because I was performing in a play that night. Um, so that was a very crazy day. Uh, I was performing, so we have a friend who, he actually lives in the home just behind ours now, um, but he's a playwright and he does this series that's a local series to a, a local theater here called Serials, where local playwrights and directors and actors and everybody kind of like, they create these um, running series.
serial like 15 minute plays so you'll go one night and you'll see a bunch of different 15 minute plays and then the next month they'll have it again and it'll be a continuation like the next episode and they've been doing them lately where they're sort of voting and so people get like plays get eliminated and stuff and then they bring in new ones and his is always one of the best he's a really great writer so he occasionally will ask me to um step into a part if it's like the last minute and he needs someone <laughs> um because I, I'm not a, like I'm not pursuing being an actress at the moment I think I've mentioned before that I went to um a conservatory originally um to study acting and then I kind of got away from it so it's something I really 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 still enjoy so much um and I don't I, I, my life is not such that my priorities allow me to just be like constantly pursuing theater because that's pretty much a full-time job and I have one of those as well as a lot of other projects. Um, but when I do get the opportunity, like when he needs someone in his play, um, I always say yes and I, I always enjoy it a great deal. So Monday was just the craziest um it was just packed full and and lots of lots of different emotions and things going on um and then tuesday we went to a dinner party at our, our playwright friend's house behind our our house um so by wednesday i had been out late two nights in a row and it was the middle of the work week and uh i was pretty exhausted and i just had to power through the last few days of the week um, and I'm it's kind of a little disorienting now of like what's going on um, but I've been trying to trying to relax this this weekend uh, although I've also been you know obsessively trying to finish the Ashburn shawl also so you know sometimes my version of re relaxing and other people's versions of relaxing are not exactly the same um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's how I live my life. So I'm going to stop there. Just don't want to waffle on and on forever. Um, thank you for letting me talk about my grandmother-in-law's funeral. I know that's probably not the most fun thing in the world to talk about. Sometimes these chit chat segments do get into <laughs> some stuff like that, but you know, it's just, I want to talk about what's on my mind with you guys. And for me, I know sometimes these chit chat segments get a little bit, you know, in the weeds about stuff like that, but I want to talk to you guys honestly about what's on my mind. And, um, you know, for me, a lot of times it's not just like a very surface level thing. Sometimes it's, um, something a bit more serious and I still think we can talk about those things with positive positivity as well as, as thoughtfulness. So I know sometimes these chit chat segments get a little bit in the weeds with stuff like that. Um, but you know, I want to talk to you guys honestly about what's on my mind. And sometimes that gets a little bit past like the surface level thing. And, uh, you know, I try to, I try to keep it still interesting and, and thoughtful and, you know, mostly positive. So, um, yeah, that's just, that's the big thing that's on my mind this week. Um, so that's what I want to talk about. Um, and yeah, I guess, I guess that's all I have for you right now, oh, right now. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all I have for you right now. Uh, thank you so much for joining me once again, and, um, I hope you'll be back next week and see what I've gotten up to with my needles in the meantime. Bye. Okay, so now I want to show you a bit of what's going on with my unraveling. So this is what I'm unraveling, if you haven't already seen it on Instagram. This is a sleeve. This isn't the whole thing. <laughs> uh, and it has been printed, as you can tell, after being knit. So I kind of thought, hey, that's kind of like sock blanky. Wouldn't that be fun? So I've been unraveling it and coming up with this. 
This is exactly what I was anticipating I would come up with. A nice white, mostly white with a little bit of black speckles look. It is a cotton and nylon sort of ribbon construction. Um, and right now I'm thinking that I'm going to knit it into some kind of bag, um, but we'll find out. So yeah, very exciting. Stay tuned for how that goes and make sure you share your findings with the hashtag the great unravel 2017 as well as on the chatter thread at the yarn to table ravelry group